Hello, uh, good evening everybody and welcome to the uh, Players Hangout at the uh, Velux CHF Final Four 2016 live from the Langsas Arena. And it's great to see uh, so many people here, especially the volunteers who really made the audience look even bigger than it was, which is, thanks for that, thanks for that guys. But it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's fantastic to welcome so many of the stars of the game onto, uh, onto the stage and uh, of course that is Mikkel Hansen. So a uh, big round of applause for Mikkel Hansen please. Thank you very much. I'm only kidding, guys. It's great also from uh, Vesprem Gaspar Margooch, from THW Kiel, Igor Anich, and from Kielce. And I want an extra round of applause for this guy because look at those pants. I mean, <laughs> from Kielce, it's Manu Sterlek. See? You gotta, you, you gotta take the microphone, Nicholas. Yeah. yeah, no, but take the mic here. Say, say what you gotta say. Just wanted to say that we talked before we came here, so we organized that he's wearing the yellow pants and I'm wearing the orange shoes. So. Yeah, looks good. Looks good. Actually, you all look really, really well. I seem to remember uh, guys used to just come up dressed any way they wanted to, a bit like myself in my beautiful new T-shirt. Can we get that? And I'm not mad about the orange and yellow, but uh, yeah. I like it. It's good. But thank you all so much for coming. It's, it, it's really, really good. Now, before we start, just for everybody in the audience, just so you didn't waste your night, what I've done is I have some sheets of paper here, okay? Uh, blank sheets of paper. So you take one of them, Gaspar, there you go. Igor, you take one of these, all right? And one for Mikkel and one for Manu. And I have some pencil markers here. And what I want you guys to do is I want you to draw the Google Hangout, all right? So whatever you think you can draw. And what I'll do is I'll give it to, as a prize to the best question at the end. So you, you kind of sign it, right? So while you're not talking, you're, you're drawing. Can you draw, Gasper? Pick, <laughs> pick, up, pick up the mic. Can you, can you draw? I'll try. All right. <laughs> Igor, can you draw? I can try. He can try, yeah. Nickel, any good? Nope. <laughs> no, but I will try, but I'm not good. Yeah, no, that's okay. But it'd be nice. It'd be a nice little present for somebody, and, and you can sign it at the end. They can put it on their bedroom wall and everything else like that. Now, also, we have some questions from the audience, which is great. Thank you very much for throwing them up here, because I'm not prepared. And online, we've got, from Australia, a guy from the Netherlands who plays for Sydney University. Uh, it's Dan with two A's. Dan, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you guys? Good. Good, thank you. All right, that's a, we'll, we'll accept that everybody's good here. And uh, from the United States of America, so we're on a lot of different continents here tonight. We have uh, Catherine. Hi, Catherine. Hi. Where are you from in the United States of America? Well, I lived a lot of places. Um, oh, right keep, at it the short, moment, keep it short, Catherine. Where, where are you from? Uh, all over <laughs> the U.S. All right, I'll ask, I'll ask an easier question to start. Where are you right now in the United oh. States of America? Right now, I'm in Madison, Wisconsin, and I moved back to Boston on Sunday. Okay, good, good for you. Right, you guys stay with us because we're gonna we're gonna talk to you. you we're gonna talk to you in a little bit. Gaspar, we're gonna start with you. Uh, simple question: How are you how are you feeling about being here? I feel really good. Last year was my first time, so this year I feel <laughs> a little bit more comfortable. <laughs> but uh, I'm just excited to start the matches. Okay, good stuff, Igor. I the same here. Really happy to be here again. I was here the first time when the first Final Four was organized. And, which, you, uh, which you won? Yeah, so good memories and uh, looking forward to make another good Actually, where, where, have you, where have you been? Where have you been after all those years? Where did you go? You kind of disappeared and then suddenly reappeared again. Yeah, I went to Gumersba after it. And, uh, where? Gumersba. Oh, okay. Germany. The only two people in the world who know <laughs> Gumersba. Hey, Gummersbach is around here, right? Gummersbach is near Cologne. You play here sometimes, right? Yeah, we won the we won the po Poco. Uh, I don't know. The cup. Won the, you won the, the cup. The third cup, not the EHF cup. The third one. It's not existing anymore. Okay, the and cup we, winners' cup. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We yeah. won it here, also in the Langsas Arena with oh. Gummersbach. Okay, very good. And I I found you in a poster in Nantes, right? Yeah, I went then in France. Yeah. The saison first. Yeah. And then in Nantes. And now back to Kiel. Yeah. It's a dream come true, really, Igor, isn't it? Yeah, it's really, really amazing to be able to play here and to be with uh, these guys here. Yeah, we're delighted to see you. Mikkel, how are you feeling? A bit like everybody else, I guess. 
very happy to be here, honored to be here to play against uh, some of the greatest players. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to, to start the game. Okay, but you've been here before as well, right? A couple of times. Yep. 2010? Yeah. The first time as, as Igor, uh, yeah. as a Barcelona player, and afterwards with Copenhagen. And uh, yeah, now here with Paris, and it's looking very much forward to, to these games, of course. Yeah, it's great. Good. And uh, Manu, not your first time either. Also, I'm very happy we are here. We are all excited for for match will come in next two days, and we are satisfied. We are uh, third time here in Cologne, and we cannot. Uh, we will wait the the first match tomorrow, and we will see how we go. It's 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 really great to have you guys here. By the way, <clears throat> what I what I did was I I, I went onto Google and looked for uh, some pictures of, of of the players who I knew were coming uh, for the Google Hangout to kind of show their handball career in pictures. And uh, this is Manu Sturlek, of course. He's uh, Croatian, but he plays for uh, Kielce in Poland, which shows kind of how how uh, international the game is. And what I've called this this particular feature for you, Manu, is Manu Sturlek's perfect hair. Right. So this is Manu. This is Manu Sturlek, and as he appears on the on the on the website for uh, for Kielce. What a beautiful, what a, in fact, if you look at this picture and you look at Manu right now on the stage, I mean, it's almost impossible to tell them apart, right? Okay. So I said, this is interesting. Manu Sterlek's perfect hair. I'm jealous. Yeah, I'm, I'm jealous too. I'm, I'm really jealous. So I said, yeah, of course. So I said, let's look at Manu Sterlek in a game. Look at the hair. It never changes. This is in the middle of a game for Croatia. Manu Sterlek's perfect hair. So I said, this, is, this must be early in the game, right? What does it look like at the end of the game? It never changes. This is the end of a game in an interview in the flash zone. So I said, come on, there's got to be some picture of Manu Sterlek with uh, dodgy hair. So I, I, I found this one where he's doing a radio interview. Look at that. He's got headphones on. The hair never moves, Manu. Manu, what's the, what's the secret? What's the secret? I don't have a secret. I... I don't know what to say. You, know, you, you surprised me with these pictures. Ah. Yeah, yeah. I, I was surprised as well. So then I said, how does this international coach feel about it? And this is what I thought. He's not one bit happy about that at all. Look at that. That's it. But this is not fair because of my hair. Oh, really? Yeah. He's just not a happy guy. Don't worry, Manu. This is how we'll always remember you. Look. Dodgy hair. We found one with dodgy hair. Round of applause for Manu. Still licking his perfect hair, please. Thank you very much. Right. Let's go to Dan. Dan, have you got a question? And who's it for, please? Yeah, I do have a question. It's going to be for Mikkel Hansen. You're one of the best players in the world, but who do you think is the best player, and what makes him such a good player? One more time, please. You were one of the best players in the, in the world, and but who do you think is the best player, and why? Why is he the best player? I would say Nikola Karabacic from my own club, Paris. Um, he's a very inspiring player, you know, he's capable of doing everything and he's, he's really good at every part in the handball game, defense, offense, uh, uh, fast break. Uh, he's, he's good looking. Also, uh, he's, the know, he's the perfect father. Yeah. Until now, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is there anything this guy can't do? I haven't, please, I, I, please, I, I, please haven't, I haven't seen it yet, you know. Please tell us something that he does wrong. Something. I mean, tell us he's bad at FIFA, uh, you know, on I the computer. I haven't played FIFA against him, so I cannot say. I cannot tell you that. So. Take, take the mic. Of course, he's a bad loser, but that makes him a good winner, you know. He, he wants to win all the time, and, and I think that's one thing you need to have inside of you if, if, if you want to go as far as being here. Yeah, I agree. Dan, who do you think is the best player in the world at the moment? Guys, pick up the mic. Just well, have it in your hand in case you, you need to say something. Well, I was gonna say Karabatic as well. Yeah, we'd like to, we'd like an or, we'd like an original an original answer. Original you know, answer. Dan. You know, is well, there right. somebody besides okay, then, then, I, then I really like Luke Abelo just because his his airtime is, is is amazing. He's just flying, and I really really like that. Can I just say, Dan? By the way, if nobody has seen it. Please go to the Facebook page and see the video that uh, Sydney University did for Hello Cologne. It's really, it's really wonderful. By the way, Dan, you guys are doing a great job down there. What position do you play in? I'm centre back. I'm a centre back myself. Yeah. Are you good? 
well, you know, good enough, I think. Yeah, that's that's great. Igor, who would you say is the best player in the world at the moment? And and it, uh, let's accept that most people would say Nikola Karabatic, but do you have another another answer? No, I, I would say also Nikola Karabatic because he's playing at this level he's playing now for so many years, and uh, he's the kind of player who can just turn the game in one second. He's he has so much influence on the game, and uh, he won the the Champions League with three different uh, teams already, and uh, hopefully not four. And uh, now he's just a, a great player and uh, playing at this level for so many years. I think it's easy to come to the top, and it's much harder to stay, to stay the there. Top. Absolutely, Manu, who who would you go for? Uh, it's really hard to say, but I will get my vote for for my uh, colleague from national team for Doma Duvniak. Duvniak, tell us why, please. What? Tell us why. Why Domagoj? Dule? Uh, because he's an amazing player. He has everything. It's from. Uh, he, he always see open player, uh, face breaks, defense, play all the time, 60 minutes in the club and national team, and he's the leader of Kiel and uh, national team of Croatia. Yeah, but the good news for all of us is he's really not that good looking, which is which is important, you know. He's not he, he's not beautiful. I mean, Karabatic is a beautiful looking man. Uh, Dulas, Dulas, well, you know, let's leave it there. Uh, Gaspar, who would you go for? Someone off the Vesprem team, maybe? Yeah, why not? Yeah, I do would it, say, do uh, it. Laszlo Noc. Really? Yeah, I think he's a complete player. He plays in attack, plays in defense. He's a leader in our team, our captain. So he's the full package. Okay, very good. Danny, are you happy enough with that answer? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the answers. Yeah. I mean, there was a, there was a couple of good ones up there, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. Just stay there with us, you know. And if you want to come back in again with uh, another question, don't worry about it. Igor, where did you prefer to play? I don't. I, I think I already know who asked this question. Where did you prefer to play, Kiel or Gummersbach? Just remember where you are, by the way, and remember who you're playing for. I think it's two different things to say. Uh, playing in Kiel is something special. You play in the whole, every time, every game full with 10,000 people, and uh, I think there is no other club in the world where you can say that you have 10,000 people pushing you every game if you're playing against the first or against the last team on the. Uh, there's always a full hole, and that's something special. And Kiel is on the top since yeah. so many years that uh, you know it's hard to compare Gumasba to to Kiel. Although Gumasba was at the time also for 10 years maybe on the top in Germany. So, so great players like Daniel Nassis, Kim Kyung Ching Yoon played also in Gumasba. So there is. Was there that, was the, a, was that the Korean guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. So Gummersbach is a, is a, is a, is a, is a big club down the south of Germany. Or where, a, where, where, a you where, where you were? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's 150 years, I think, of uh, history behind. My goodness me! I didn't know handball was around 150 years. Listen, you've played for some big clubs, right? How does it uh, compare? You've played at Barcelona. Take the mic here. Yeah? You've played at Barcelona. You played obviously with that uh, that big project in Copenhagen, which was massive at the time. I still remember going to that football stadium where you guys played. Uh, and, and how does that compare with playing with uh, Paris? It's three amazing experiences. You know, uh, of course, when you go to Barcelona with all the history, it's a big thing, especially for a guy f like me. Uh, I was 20 years at that time, and yeah, uh, yeah it was it, it was a big move for me. Um, it, I learned a lot about handball, professional handball, what it takes to to go to the top. On the other point, I came back to Denmark, uh, played a place where I could develop my physics, uh, work very hard on that. And as you said, there was a lot of of what would you say, like a lot of funny games, like like that in Parken, the yeah. National Stadium in Denmark, where there was thirty-six thousand people for 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 a game like that. And, yeah, now I'm here in, in Paris enjoying myself with a lot of good players. You know, I've been very lucky in my career that that I've been in clubs with such good players, such good coaches, everything where I could uh, well, I could develop a lot as a player. Yeah, no, it's it's great. Now I just want to say that uh, we did invite. There was another guest that we wanted to invite tonight, but uh, we rang we rang the guest's agent and uh, uh, he couldn't make it. And uh, we were we were a little bit disappointed, and that is of course Mikkel Hansen's headband, because Mikkel Hansen never goes anywhere 
on the court without his headband, right? Yeah. So we had a, we had a, we had a look look at this. We had a look at Mikkel her, Mikkel's headband, and you can kind of see why he ended up in Paris. So there he is with a blue a blue headband. Wait for it. White headband. Red headband. You see where I'm going here with this? Of course. Okay. Now, but here's where I I kind of lose lose the plot. What's going on here? <laughs> that was a bad that was a bad headband day, was it? Yeah, it wasn't that cute, you know. We lost the final, so. Was that? Was, um, did you actually did you actually wear a green headband with red? That's just yeah, like, like it's it a fashion shoes, faux you know? pas. It matched the shoes. Oh, match the shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. I remember you used to have your. Did you have your name or your number or your initials that yeah, you used to have printed on it? Back in the days. Back in the days. Back now in the days, it's it's, it's cool. Yeah, and back in the days, this was Mikkel with his headband. <laughs> it started early. <laughs> yeah, you see? Did. Look at this. Beard, well, did you? Did, yeah. Did you? Did you always have the beard, uh, Mikkel? Was the beard always there? Yeah. It's. I was at. How old was it at that point? Well, I I don't know who that kid is, but he's ten and he, or, or eight or so. It's it's cute, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good one. It's like somebody dressed up for Halloween. It's great. Anyway, look, I wanted yeah. to give you a word of advice, and just so everybody thinks that I wasn't always this beautiful. This was me 20 years ago. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, Michael, I I just wanted to warn you of the dangers. Of, yeah? You could have used a headband here. I could have used a headband there. But I want you to I wanted to warn you of the dangers of gravity because of course this is this is what happens twenty years later. And then the doctor said to me, This will be me in twenty years' time. It's not so bad, eh? I think I have a chance there. Igor, did you ever have long hair? Not that I remember. Maybe longer, but not long. But you're you're when actually I you against Mikkel when he had the same haircut that I have. Yeah? Two thousand three, two thousand four. And his hair was short. Yeah? yeah, Gaspar, really. did you did you ever have sh did you ever have long hair? Never. Never. You always Manu. Well, what a stupid question. <laughs> Manu, Manu still likes perfect hair. Manu, did you did you ever have long hair? Oh, no. say so you will show the pictures. I did every. Yeah. It's, yeah. So, no, come on, tell us the, the secret. What? What is the secret? I don't have a secret, really. What do you put in it? Is there? I mean, maybe you can get a you can get an advertising deal out of this. You know, whatever whatever goes in your you will, hair. You will not believe, but nothing. Nothing. No. I don't, I don't make nothing on the hair. Natural. It's natural. natural. I, I, I love it. Let's bring the lady from uh, Wisconsin who's moving to Boston on Sunday into the conversation. Catherine, how are you? I'm excellent. How are right. you? I'm, I'm, I'm really well. Thank you very much. Guys, pick up that mic because you never know who she's going to ask. Catherine, what's your question and who's it for? Actually, it's for everyone. Um, I want to know how many languages you can speak and the person who can speak the most to list them all and which is was the most difficult to learn my goodness me so uh, we have a 30 minute uh, hangout here tonight uh, <laughs> Gasper Yonapot uh, Kostanum for coming today how's your oh my god how's your how's your Hungarian by the way uh, so so it's yeah. really hard yeah. The hardest language I have to learn. All right, what, what what languages can you speak? Now we'll accept you can speak. We'll accept they can all speak English, right? Even Manu well, Sterling. Yeah. We'll accept that they can all speak English. So the extra languages are then German, a little bit of Spanish, and of course the Balkanic languages, Croatian, Serbian. If if that counts. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it does. But you also you're from Slovenia, right? Does that count for like civil languages? No, Swedish, Danish, and Norwegian. No, 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 no. That's just one. Will you? What is it? Your your voice is not so loud. Yeah. Yeah. You can only count Serb or Croat as one. Okay, that's one. But you speak Slovenian. That's a different language, right? Yeah. But sort of the same. So how many languages then? Slovenian, Serb, Croatian, German, Spanish. And English. Okay, we say we don't count English. No, but I'm just saying okay, that you can yeah. speak English. All right, five. That's yeah. very good. Igor. Yeah, five also. Go on. Uh, English, of course, uh, German, French, several Croatian, and uh, because my wife comes from Slovenia, so Slovenian also. And Slovenian also? Yeah. You're going to blow us all away here, aren't you? You're going to say you speak like 10 languages or something. Go on, nope. tell us. No. Nope. Danish. <laughs> Thank God. A bit French, a bit Spanish. Okay, can you speak French now? More or less, you know. It's, uh, he speaks very good French. It's no, okay, no, you know. can't speak French. What's going on there? No, it's great. Really? And then I'm learning in German, you know. It's 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 a perfect uh, situation for him with me, I guess, you know. It's a perfect story. I, yeah. I don't speak super well German, so he can instruct me to do everything, and I cannot actually say anything. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Danish, like, uh, Danish, English, French, Spanish. 
Swedish, if you want, a bit German, or, you know, a little bit of everything. I think that's only four. Am I wrong? Danish? Mm, Danish, Swedish, Norwegian, maybe. You can't you speak want. Swedish and Norwegian in the I same language. I'm from a border in Denmark, you know, of course. You speak but you know, this is getting out of hand. You can't count Swedish and Norwegian. That's really different from, from Danish. All right, okay. Say, say something for us now in Danish and then say the same thing in Swedish. And you're not allowed to just say the same thing but, but, singing like this to make it sound like but Swedish. But then go If you like it. All right, That's you say. Tak How are you? Tak begide. Tak. Tak begide. Tak begide. Ah, All right. No. Okay. No. 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 All right. Okay. Say. Let's, say let's something in Danish. A, a, a long I'm sentence. Just, I've just said something. Yeah, but like, say it yeah, again. I, I wasn't I, I, listening. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pass it on. All right. I, I'm only counting four. He's one of the best players in the world. Four languages is enough for him. What did you say? Yeah, but you can't count Swedish and Norwegian. You just don't want to be less than all of these. Oh, now he's taking the mic okay, back. Okay. Swedish is not a language, I guess. <laughs> Manu. Uh, I think I'm the worst here. Really. I speak only English, Croatian, and uh, of course Polish. Do you speak Polish? Yeah. Dziękuję bardzo for coming here tonight. Dziękuję. Yeah, you like that, do you? Ah, it's it's uh, it's uh, we have a lot of same words with Croatian, so it's for our guys from Balkan. It's easier to to, to learn Polish. So it's it's the same language, Polish. Is that what no, you're saying? It's Polish it's, it's and it's not the same. Did everybody said he said no, it was no, the same? No, 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 it's not. It, it's normally very hard language, Polish, but I say we have some. Same word, so it's easier to learn, not easy. Yeah, okay. Uh, Catherine, there you go. But we're gonna we're gonna ask them in a minute which is the most difficult. But I think I probably already know the answer. Are you impressed at, at uh, Catherine that this level of kind of international, uh, first of all, so many different players playing outside their own nation and also being able to speak so many languages? Yes, and um, because and for me it's super exciting because everyone is speaking English today because I've gone on seen so many interviews on YouTube and it's not I I'm not unfortunately I don't speak anything else um, I can understand a little French and I saw the KL très bien. pardon très bien uh, we, obviously my little my little bit of French is is not understandable keep going. <laughs> Yeah, but it is great. I, you know, it's interesting you say that. When I first started, when I first started doing doing this, and the only players I could interview were from Scandinavia. Nobody else spoke any, uh, like almost nobody else spoke English. And now, sort of seven, eight years later, it's uh, really, really. So the most difficult one to learn. What are you saying? Without a doubt, Hungarian. Yeah, it's impossible. Without it doesn't even sound like a language. What do you think? I think also Hungarian is yeah, really, really hard. Yeah, it's impossible. What are you thinking? What's the most difficult one to learn? I, it must be French, I guess. Um, it was way more difficult than, than Spanish. Okay. okay. I will say also Hungarian because when I hear this language, I think it's no chance to learn this. No, no chance to learn. Okay. Next question: Is there anything crazy you do if you win the trophy on Sunday? I guess this is uh, Manu. We'll ask you first. This is the kind of the Agrapolo moment, which will always be the Agrapolo moment, and everybody will just be copying uh, Agrapolo. The trophy is big, so it pretty much covers everything, Manu, especially if you're a winger. So, is there anything crazy you would do with the trophy if you win it on Sunday? I didn't think about this yet, but if we if we win this uh, this final four, we will make something for sure. Yeah. yeah. Do you have you? But you've no idea what it might be. Obviously, I still don't have idea, but it will came in the moment. Maybe put a pair of yellow pants on the trophy. See what it looks like. You know, I mean, those yellow pants, they're they're really out there. We will try. That's yeah, good. What about you, uh, Gaspar? Any ideas? No, nothing special. Hug it, kiss it, be gentle with it. <laughs> I like I like I like your style. Hug it and kiss it. Actually, just before we go on there, uh, Gaspar Margooch, hugging and kissing, uh, brings me on to my next little story. And uh, so I, I looked up Gaspar Margooch, and we decided that it's the wrong name. We need to call him Romeo Margooch. Because here he is playing for Celia, and at the end of the game, win or lose, off he goes over to the beautiful woman in his life. Leans in for a little kiss. Even if he's playing for Slovenia, over he goes. How did I play, baby? Did I look good out there? And if you think it's only with the girl at the end, he actually does it during the game too. Now look at that. What are we saying there? Is that now? I was trying to figure out. Is that double check? No. Is that who's that? The guy you're kissing there, Gasper. That is you, right? 
Yes, yeah. it's uh, Clement Sette. Yeah, Sette. Who's he going to? I, I heard he's moving somewhere next. And then behind you is uh, one of the brothers, uh, Scuba brothers, right? Yeah, the older Scuba. The older Scuba, the guy that gets his hair cut every six months. Yeah. Do, uh, now, Gaspar, talk us through that photograph. I mean, what? Yeah, I mean, this is this. Incredible defense, look. It's really good defense, isn't it? I mean, he gets every part of the body. I mean, is this, is this the uh, Slovenian school of handball, is it? All body parts. Right? Absolutely, cover all body parts. But then, then we said, you know what? This is okay, Gasper. But this is the real way to do it. That's the way to do it. Now, I want you to really look it's at another, the, another level. It's another. I mean, this is Champions League level here. Look at this. Look, it's a French kiss. I like that, Igor. I should have thought of that. Damn, why didn't I think of that? No, I want you to look at uh, Vinehold here. He has eye only for his uh, his opponent's beard. Just look at that. But his arm is still free to maybe do something that we don't know. And uh, I mean, I mean, Gasper, if you're going to do it, this is the way to do it. Agreed, everybody? That's the way to do it. Do you agree, Gasper? Yes, he does. Look at that. Thank you very much, Gasper. By the way, what happened to your eye in that photograph? Do you know? Uh, yeah, when you played against Celia, my ex-teammates. Uh, yeah, ex they let they let you yeah. know. Yeah. They let you know that you were there. Greeting. Yeah, Igor, don't worry. We have something special planned for you in a minute. Okay. Uh, Mikkel, anything you'd do with the trophy if you win it, or? I haven't really thought about it, you know. But, uh, let's see. It has to be in the moment, and so. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. So let's see. Now, Igor, you've won the trophy. Pick it up. Tell us what you did when you won the trophy. Don't worry, this is not the photograph. I have no photograph of you winning the trophy. Yeah, nothing special. Just carry it over, over my head and kiss it. Well, they're very exciting, at least, these handball players. All right, next question uh, from somebody in the audience. What would it take for Mikkel Hansen to cut his hair off? Oh. Is everyone all right down there? What are you saying? Don't do it? Don't she likes yeah. it? Look at that. You have yeah, a fan. You also saw the game for Barcelona when I did it, huh? You know, actually, a story about that was like, as Igor said, when I played here first time, I was actually semi bald like you. And uh, when Sorry, I. Wait, wait, actually, wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold the phone here. What do you mean semi bald like me? Yeah, what know. does that mean? No, it, it, was, it was short, you know? All right, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for. Uh, yeah. We played a game in Champions League. I hadn't told my family that I had taken everything. And uh, actually, my mom didn't recognize me after like 10, 15 minutes on the field. So I think it was a one-time deal. I'm gonna go. I, I have to say, it's it's something about hair that you're you're automatically recognized, aren't you? Or but lately, it's beards. Igor, I want you to start with beards, please. This is now this is important because beards have suddenly made a big uh, a big kind of come back into handball. I mean, you look at Jesper Nodesbo. There was a guy taking a, he, he plays for a Danish team, and his beard was like waving in the wind. It was so long. So he was a penalty taker. Nikolai Yeah, did you see? It was like, what's, what's the idea of the beard, uh, Igor? I don't know. It makes you look manly first. <laughs> okay. I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, since I'm not lucky with uh, the hair, yeah. so I, I grow the beard. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, now it's time to come to Igor's uh, Igor's story. Igor, grab the grab the microphone, because ma many people probably won't remember, but a few weeks ago, uh, Igor Ranic came on to the court to score the win well, not the winning goal, but the last goal, correct, Igor, against Barcelona in the big in the big quarterfinal. Okay. Now, Igor, can you tell people what happened and how I helped you? how I helped you get your goal back in the Champions League. Please tell everybody, because people think I'm all about myself, but really I care. What what happened? So, usually the, the people uh, mistake me for Canaeus, or the opposite. For who? Uh, Juan Canaeus. Juan Canaeus, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, at that time when I scored, yeah. uh, the guys thought it was Juan Canaeus. And that Correct. Me. So, what did I do? What did I do for you? So, you wrote on the Twitter from the EHF, that it was a mistake done, and that it was me actually, and not uh, Canaeus. You're very welcome, and thank you Thanks. very much for the 20 euro. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is, shout it out, Igor Anic. This is Juan Canellas. I have a story. Oh, even better than my story. Go. We, we played a friendly match, and uh, when the guys just called our names, you know, before the game, and he said, Number 21, John Caneas. I came forward and I 
said hi. And nobody. And when he said number 19, Igor Anich, he came forward. No problem. And uh, all the team was laughing really no, hard. Yeah. And uh, the public was just mistaken what was happening, and we were just laughing. Yeah. Brilliant. That was funny. Yeah, yeah I, I like that. I like that. Let's just go again. Who is this? Do you know, Mikkel? Who's that? Go on, pick up your mic. Igor. Yeah. yeah. Next photo. Juan Canellas. Next photo. The tattoo. Who's that? Oh, it's the tattoo, isn't it? That's Igor Anich. And the next one? Juan Canellas. I mean, it's unbe they're unbelievably alike, aren't they? And the next one? Igor Anich. Igor, we have done this not only for the people watching in their hundreds of thousands around the world, but it's for the table officials tomorrow. In the Champions League, in the Velux CHF Champions League for the table officials, I want this edited, I want it shown, instant replay before the game, so they all know that this is Igor Anic. There's an easy way. Yeah? I wear the 19 jersey and... Normally, I agree. Normally this is, normally this works. Normally this works. By the way, how are you getting on with your pictures, guys? Yeah, they're really good. Keep keep drawing there. Keep drawing. Uh, Manu, I want to ask you a question. Um, are your fa are you like the only one in your family that's involved in handball, or do you have a family tradition in handball? No, my my father is a handball coach, but for young players, he's I don't know 30 years almost coach. He's also now have uh, some kids train he and. He's really good. He was uh, my coach also five or six years. Is that is that difficult to have your father as your coach? Yes, is it, this is the worst. Oh, really? Why? Uh, Why? Uh, obviously, it's your, it's your guilty for everything. Oh, really? Yeah. That, it's your fault. Yeah. Yeah. So, daddy coached you, yeah. but is he is he proud now? Is he is he sort yes, of? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. This is his life, handball and. Uh, he, he, he make a lot of good players. He also was trainer of uh, Zlatko Horvat from Zagreb. Really? Yeah. Did, what, give, give us a name. What was the name of the club he coaches at? He was in Zagreb. In oh, the, so he's in, part in of the, the second team. Okay. Now he's in, in uh, one small club in, in Zagreb. Okay. Named Dubrava. Excellent. That's yeah. great. That's great. Uh, Gaspar, family handball. Yeah, the sport is in my family. My grandfather played. I have a brother. Your grandfather played? Yeah, he was a goalkeeper. Uh, my brother plays in Celia. Yes. Uh, and I, Gal. Yeah, Gal. Yes. Yeah. Also a left-hander. Yes. Uh, and I have also a younger half brother who also started to play, but he's very, very young. So. Okay. So there's three Marguches. Yeah, and all left-handers. <laughs> Gold dust. I'll tell you that family has a mansion in Slovenia. That's for sure. Uh, what about you, Igor? How's your picture coming? Who are you? What are you coloring? Is it Bugs Bunny? Oh, yeah. oh, that's quite good actually. I like that. Okay, go, go. Yeah, uh, my father was also a handball professional. That's why I played for the na French national team. He came back in '88 uh, to France, and uh, so I moved with my mom there. Yeah. And uh, I grew up in France. Yeah. So he was a uh, he was also the first uh, captain of the Boston national team. It's amazing. Because before it was Yugoslavia. Yeah, yeah, and after yeah, yeah, the yeah, war, yeah. It become yeah, yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah, yeah. And then he's he's still tra trainer. That's today. That's amazing. And my brother also plays. Handball. Actually, I have to ask you. Your brother plays handball. Yeah. Where does he brother. play? He's playing third league in the team where my father is the coach. Okay. Uh, you're a line player, right? You've always been a line player. Yeah. When I was young, so 15, I played uh, middle back. Yeah. And uh, I just thought I was too slow to be a middle back, yeah. so they pushed me away to the line. Is it is it true that you need a big ass to be a good line player? Because Julian Aguilagalde has got a big ass, right? Uh, I, I hope I don't have a big ass. So. You what? My, my wife says I don't have a big ass. Well, she's probably right. So, But Gasper, can I ask you? You play on the wing, right? Yeah, and I have a big ass. You do have a big ass. <laughs> Manu, do you have a big ass? Take the microphone. You're like... I think I'm something in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. yeah? But Gasper, you really do. Take take the microphone. What what is the what is the biggest joke on the Vesperm team? My ass. Yeah. <laughs> Mikkel, you 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 actually I've checked out your your behind. It's 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 cute. I mean, not in a in a professional I, way. I, in a professional I have checked it out. Or I, uh, I've what checked it have? out. Well, you know, you see slow motion action replays and all, and you know, yeah. it's uh, yeah, it looks good. Okay. Looks good. It looks good in looks good in blue or white, you know. Yeah. yeah?
Yeah, let's leave that there. Uh, okay, it's what? Awkward, let, no, it's a very awkward moment. What do you think about the new rule that referees uh, have the possibility to show a situation in slow motion uh, replay again? I think it's called instant replay. So, but the idea is now, obviously, that uh, you know, with the goal line technology, they can check whether the uh, the ball has crossed the line, right? But they can also f maybe find a situation where they want to check for sure. How do you feel about that? Do you know that you've got this instant replay, and maybe where do you think it can be used in the game? And we, we, we'll, we'll keep it as quick as we can. Oh, it's going to be great, you know. Obviously, uh, sometimes in a very close game, it's, it's, it's difficult for the referees. They have to take uh, their decision in like a split second. So yeah. I hope it's going to help them a lot to to take the right decision and. Uh, and afterwards, uh, we cannot complain about the referees Absolutely. because they, they could check the video and stuff. So, but you, yeah, would, I'm very would you about it. But you couldn't overuse it, you know. Otherwise, the game is too stop start, right? Obviously, it's got to be. But but we have to see it now. Now is the first time we test. Yeah, the absolutely. And, uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see how it's turning out. Absolutely, Manu. Of course, you're probably delighted that there was no instant replay in the game uh, against uh, Flensburg. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Of course, I'm I'm delighted that you're here. Stop it. Be careful, every one of you. Manny, what do you think about this instant, this instant replay that the referees can check? What's your, what's your feeling about it? I think this is very good. We, we know in a lot of other sports uh, there is a lot of errors already in this rule. So, so I think th this will be improve uh, the quality of handball. And there will be not so much uh, mistakes. Okay, good, good. Uh, Gaspar, what do you think? Uh, this instant replay rule? Yeah, I would be uh, for it, but maybe only in the decisive moments, not uh, all the games, because you slow the game down and too much interruption. But in deci decisive moments, when uh, an important match is decided, it would be a good thing. To yeah, I, 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 I like that. That's a, that's a great answer. Uh, Igor, I'm not going to ask you, because you're doing a really good... That's a really good picture. Okay, that's... Oh, you gave him his headband. Clever. I like it. Dan, can I bring you back in there, please? Um, of who course. are you? I mean, who are you looking at in this in this uh, game and thinking, or in this tournament and thinking they have a they have a great chance and uh, maybe they could win it? I mean, as a uh, centre player for Sydney University, you know, you've played in the World Championships. You did that hello well, cologne. I mean, not personally, me not personally, but we. Oh, right, we're, okay. uh, I'm only kidding. We're going anyway, for no. at the moment, but Give I think PSG. Go ahead. PSG, sorry. PSG is gonna gonna go for the for the title. Who, who's going to go? Paris Saint-Germain. Paris Saint-Germain, okay. For absolute sure. No pressure, Michael. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Catherine, yeah. can I ask you who your favourite is for the uh, tournament? Uh, OC. PSG. OC. <laughs> Good French. Well done. P Does that bother you, Michael, that you're the favourites here? I would say I, I don't really see a favorite, you know. We talked to two people now, but I think it's very open. Uh, all the four teams are great teams, and uh, me, myself, personally, I have a lot of respect for the three other teams. So, you know, it's about uh, having the day, playing good at the, at the game, and then everything can happen. Everybody knows that when you come here, the other team you, you face has a lot of talent, so if you're not really there 100%, you're not going to win, so... It's going to be very exciting for everybody here. And, yeah, uh, we're looking very much forward to it. Yeah, just be careful with that hand. Don't hit yourself yeah, with the microphone. That was yeah, that was that was one of those. Too. Yeah, a little bit. Manu, can I just uh, very quickly because I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you two what you think about the other semi-final because obviously you're just going to say 50-50 between yourselves, right? And then I'll ask you two after that what you think about the other semi-final looking in. All right. But Manu, I want to ask you a question because it, it may have escaped people's notice, but Kielsa is the only team here that hasn't actually played against these other teams this season. Um, so do you come here, Manu, your team, maybe with a little, uh, a little bit of uh, a secret, you know, that they, they all maybe know each other, but maybe they don't know you? There's no secret. Every, every game is on television. So. Yeah, but it never, it's never the same. They never see the whites of your eyes, you know. Is it, is it, is it a little bit different for you guys? You've, you've never faced any of these teams. Uh, no, because we play friendly match with Paris in the start of the season last year. I, I don't know how much match we play with with Kiel and, and with West Brom. It's, I think also like Michael, it's, uh, everything is open. It will be win with one or two goals on. It's, it's, it can go on uh, two sides. So 
I think this is very cool, and the, this year team is everybody can win. Okay, sounds good. All right, let's go to you two. Gaspar, I'm going to start with you. The match, no, uh, not your match, Paris Saint Germain Kielsen. Be careful because Mikkel Hansen's bigger than all of us. So, what do you think, uh, looking in as a professional handball player, what do you think? If we look at the season, maybe Paris was a little bit more convincing. Uh, but uh, we also saw Kilt uh, in different, different, uh, with different sides because they won in Barcelona, which was very difficult. So uh, it's hard to decide. Uh, maybe a little advantage for Paris, but it will be a very, very tough match. Yeah. Okay. Well said, uh, Igor. Paris Kielsen. Yeah, I think it's two great teams with great players and uh, two great trainers on the both sides. And uh, yeah, I must say when you look the, the the team of Paris and you see four players, which one is here? Four players were uh, rented to the most valuable player of the year of the season, and uh, that's just telling everything that you know with Omeyer, Kabac, Nasis, and so on and so on. I think they have the the best team of the four here, and uh, maybe the most experienced also, mm -hmm. and that can be something you know important in uh, two two days game. So. I think Paris, for me, are the favorite. Okay. Uh, Manu, sorry. According to these two guys, you lose tomorrow. But you never know. You never know. Think Flensburg. Think Hamburg. All right? All right. Go ahead, Manu. Everybody can win. Absolutely. Now, we go to you. Uh, Kiel against Vesprem. What do you think, Manu? Uh, I will say 50-50. <laughs> Is it really 50-50, though? No. I mean, Vesprem is very strong, right? I will say why now. Okay. Vesprem play a really good season. They won everything for now. Seha Liga, uh, Hungarian Cup, and Championship. But Kiel came back. They came in Final Four. They have a lot of injury players all the season. And they grow grow, grow now like a team. And they're in really good shape. And they also have chances. And I, I, they play... Here, here in Germany, and I think it will be equal and it will be a very hard game for both teams. Okay, that's a good answer. And plus, they have Duvniak, which you said is the best player in the world at the moment. Mikkel? Can I just say the same as him? He mentioned everything, I would say. Absolutely. Say, say exactly the same. No, uh, but we then. Have two, we have another two minutes of broadcasting time, so say exactly the same thing. Keep it going there. Oh, as he said, like, it's two good coaches, it's two very good teams. Uh, who plays very good handball on the tactical level, I think. And, as he said, it's about who's uh, who's having the day, you know. Uh, a lot of good players playing, and uh, yeah, as he said, the best Prem has played a very, very good season until now. And, uh, until now, <laughs> I don't know what no, that means. No, it isn't finished yet. All right, yeah, yeah, that's okay, okay. So it's they have a yeah, chance, 50-50, you're saying? Yeah, I think it's you know, Kiel play here, he plays here in um, in Köln where. I've experienced to play against Kiel, and it was uh, 19,500 against 500 of our fans. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. It is a bit difficult. It's a, bit, it's, so a bit, it's a big plus for them. It's gonna it? be. It's gonna be a great game, I think. And, uh, yeah, everybody can look forward to hopefully two very good games. Absolutely. Uh, listen, no one at home is going to see this, but a little show of hands. Hands up, who thinks that uh, Vesprem can win the first semi-final tomorrow? Two people out of the entire audience. Three. And obviously then Kiel. And over this side, who thinks that Kielsa can win the uh, the semi-final? <sighs> Two Kielsa fans and the and the uh, media officer. No, I'm only kidding. He's not even the media officer. So really, you think it's going to be a, a Kiel-Paris final. And if it's a Kiel-Paris final, who thinks that Paris will win? So most people actually think Kiel. They're probably all German. That's why they're saying Kiel, you know. doesn't doesn't really count. Dan, listen, thanks very much for staying with us uh, all the way from Australia. Enjoy the games on EHF TV. Yeah? Yeah, thanks. And good luck with your career. And Catherine, really, thank you so much for joining us from uh, Wisconsin in the USA. And uh, enjoy the games on EHF TV, okay? Always. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, the first semi final is uh, you guys. Kielce against uh, Paris, quarter past three, Central European time on EHF TV, followed by Vesprem Kiel at six o'clock on EHF TV or whatever channel you're, you're going to be watching around the world. Now, before we finish, I just want to show you the uh, picture painted by Gaspar Marguch, Mikkel Hansen, and uh, Manu Sterlek. There you go. You know, as they say, less is more. Less is more, yeah. And this, my friends, 
is the one done by Igor Anich. Look at that. Okay, no eyes, but you know, it's pretty cool. Igor, will you sign this? Yeah? First hand up gets it. Right, you get it. This girl down the back. Are you allowed to take it? You're a volunteer. You can take it. I can also sign mine if I'm not. What, will we all sign? Will we get all the four guys to sign it? You'd like that, would you? Casper, will you also sign it? But maybe on the... No, I'm kidding. Just somewhere in the front there. Listen, thank you all very much for coming. Really appreciate it. Thank you all very much for watching at home. And one big last round of applause for Gasper, for Igor, for Mikkel, and for Manu. Thank you very much. Good night. Hope you enjoyed it.